And touching on a earlier meeting, we didn't do the debrief last week because uh, most of the members here went to the uh, Moody Street Forum that was happening last Thursday. Um, Jonathan Paz and uh, Colleen Bradley MacArthur put on a forum, a public forum to uh, uh, garner opinions about what should be done about the future of Moody Street uh, after the mayor decided that she wasn't going to use her powers to extend uh, the Moody Street closure, which has been happening for three years. Um, we talked about this last week. Uh, and um, and so most of us went there. I thought it was a really good meeting. We'll talk a little bit about it. But our team member, Eamon Dawes, uh, spoke. Uh, I thought he did a really good job. Um, we were also the only people that went and recorded that meeting. You can find it uh, on our YouTube page. I thought it was a great meeting and you should watch it. I um, mean, you should watch Eamon's presentation. Eamon, though, was cut off uh, from his uh, presentation from a three minute time limit. Um, so we thought we would allow him the floor to give his full presentation, which I thought was a uh, very poignant. Uh, so, Eamon, please take it away. Uh, th thank you, Chris. Um, I think when last time I was talking uh, on Channel 781 News, uh, I mentioned the, the mayor mentioning uh, in traffic committee how there are different parts of the city government that are responsible for different parts of Moody Street. She mentioned that city council has the sidewalks, traffic commission has the parking lane. Um, and I think if you listen to what she's saying, you know, one thing that dawns on you is that it takes the entire city to run Moody Street. Um, so I think that over the past years, the only body that has made decisions around Moody Street has really been the Traffic Commission. And I think as we look forward um, to what Moody Street could be, it's going to require involvement from more parts of the city. Um, so as we look at sort of Moody Street um, next year and the years forward, I sort of have a you know 10 point plan of things that we can do this year and then um, you know, look into future years. Um, so the first decision that we have to make is a commitment to having some sort of pedestrianized Moody Street, having some sort of summer Moody Street. Um, there's lots of energy around Moody Street at the moment, but we need to focus on the energy of how will we improve Moody Street, not if we are going to close Moody Street. So shaping the conversation in that way is you know, important so we can you know, start planning and looking towards the future. Um, the second is, you know, redoing those traffic lights at either end of Moody Street. Um, they're currently set up on timings that are designed for four-way intersections. When you close Moody Street, they become three-way intersections. Um, you know, that's an easy win we can do this year to help improve traffic in the area. Uh, we need to, I think we need to revisit the current parking lot situation. Um, you know, currently we don't charge for parking after 6 p.m. Um, so it can be hard to find a spot if you're trying to uh, go to dinner at seven or eight, or, you know, you're trying to go out to a bar at nine to 10 o'clock at night, um, because there's no market incentive to free up those spots. Um, also, someone at the meeting, you know, mentioned validation, and I think that'd be a great idea. You know, if we want to validate parking for, uh, you know, it, anyone that shops at those Moody Street businesses, I, I think that's great. But I think we need to revisit uh, the parking situation, not only in the lots, um, but also on residential side streets. You know, when we invite visitors, uh, you know, we want them to be parking in our municipal lots. We don't want them parking in front of somebody's house on Chestnut or Walnut, um, you know, or Gordon Street. So I would look, maybe we could do, you know, residential parking permits. I know they have it down at, um, you know, Flood Street, John Street, Friend Street, that neighborhood. Um, but maybe that's something we can look into. I think it's a question we could be asking. Um, currently, access to Moody Street in the summer, you know, is blocked off by, you know, big, Jersey barriers um, and those metal fences, which requires either delivery drivers or emergency vehicles to get out of, of their uh, car or truck and move something out of the way. Um, that sort of inhibits emergency uh, response. Uh, it also makes it really tricky for delivery drivers to navigate that area. Um, you know, I think something just like a do not enter sign would you know be more than enough to keep people out, along with some you know bollards or plantings, uh, something that's a bit more you know, uh, visually appealing, um, but still denotes some of that separation. Um, I know that there's been, you know, instances where, you know, trucks get caught trying to turn. Um, and I think we can just do a better job about how we delineate the space between um, the pedestrian plaza inside Moody and the streets outside. Um, also something that was brought up by someone else on the uh, meeting last Thursday was about trash and recycling. Um, you know, we all hear about the rats on the south side. Um, and there's not enough trash and recycling bins on Moody Street to 
um, put up with sort of the increased demand when you get more people there. Um, so I would definitely want CPW to put out some more bins, you know, make sure that they're cleaned up, um, even potentially something um, to have people, you know, sweeping and picking up trash uh, on the weekends. Um, we have to look at sort of accessibility, you know, so it's accessibility for uh, maybe like wheelchair users um, who maybe need ramps, you know, to go from the sidewalk to the street. Um, there's also logistical accessibility. Um, one thing that the business owners who spoke last week talked about is that, you know, they were often kind of blindsided um, by the changes that were occurring. The city wasn't communicating with them. And um, one business owner who owns uh, a few barbershops, um, you know, native Spanish speaker, his English, you know, was okay, um, but it certainly wasn't great. He was saying that he lost up to 90% of his business when Moody Street closes in the summer. Um, you know, and I can imagine that if your clientele doesn't speak English as their primary language, you know, it's really hard to um, make sure that they're informed of what the city is doing. So, you know, the city needs to be a lot more transparent and have a lot more communication about what's being done to Moody Street. Um, and there's a lot of accessibility goals to make there. Uh, last few is about, you know, public seating. You know, I've seen people who sit on the curb um, over the summers because there's no place to sit unless you're actively patronizing a restaurant. Um, so, you know, that's that's something that we can do like immediately just to get some benches out there, just to get some public seating. Um, and then also what I kind of talk about being like having like a lively street, you know, fun for all ages, whether it's food trucks or murals or some play structures in the street. Um, you know, I think there's something that needs to be done to really help out, um, you know, the space in between the restaurants and in between the stores who choose to have uh, items for sale outside. Uh, and, and finally, uh, just like we commit to do this, you know, every year, you know, when the fall comes around, we need to be able to say, hey, what worked well, what do we want to improve on? Um, you know, let's not wait until this time next year to talk about how do we want to improve things. Uh, I think those are sort of short term things that are reasonable to get done sort of for this year to make it better. Um, we need lots more uh, long term planning. Um, but anyone who really uh, wants Moody Street to succeed, I think it's a place of, you know, that instills a lot of civic pride uh, and that civic pride should lead to civic engagement. So come down to Moody Street to, you know, practice your instrument, come pick up trash on Sunday mornings, uh, come with your kids and give them some sidewalk chalk um, and, you know, make it a real lively space. So thank you, Amin. I, I think that's beautiful. I think, I think, Eamon speaks to uh, a large truth that I think we all agree on, that we can make the Moody Street closure experience better. Um, I think there were a lot of ways uh, that the city um, kind of fumbled it a little bit. Uh, like for the fact that I learned at that meeting that all of the business owners or all the ones that aren't you know, friends with the mayor, they didn't even know it was happening. At first, the first time it happened, they just like showed up one day and the the street was closed down. And so I think a lot of the frustrations that the business owner has um, with this idea, a lot of those frustrations are more on the city, more on the mayor than really it is on the Moody Street closing, uh, because there are ways that uh, the city could be um actively helping uh, the businesses as well. Um, but yeah, also just a lot of, I mean, like public seating, like why was there never an additional bench? I think Jen McCarthy and her tenure has a net loss of public seating on Moody Street. I recall when I moved here, there were more benches and she took them away. So I think she has a net loss of, of seating. And even after closing down Moody Street, there was no addition. And so easy things like that can just make it much better. And so I thought that the uh, meeting as a whole, especially Eamon's uh, presentation really spoke to that about you know what other ideas do we have? It doesn't have to be the exact same way with the frustrations that some people had and a lot of people had. Um, there can it could be better and it could be uh, a better experience. But I thought overall just the meeting went really well and um, a lot of good support and a lot of very valid things uh, brought up about Moody Street. Yeah. So so next week is the traffic commission meeting, and I think we're going to hear sort of two proposals for the street. Um, one coming from Mayor McCarthy and another from Councilor Paz. Um, I'm not entirely sure what either will look like, but when talks have been done in the past, uh, you know, the traffic commission doesn't like um, half measures for Moody Street, you know, things that only close on the weekends or only close at night, um, because that's just logistically really tricky when the traffic patterns keep changing. Um, you know, and they don't, even they talked about, oh, what if it was just like one way? 
Um, they talked about that last year and uh, traffic engineer Garvin was saying, you know, hey, like it, it really causes a lot of logistical issues around, you know, how do we route this traffic? How do we make it safe? Um, you know, how do we make sure that um, emergency vehicles can still have access, you know, when there is even limited traffic? Um, so I, I have a feeling that uh, Mayor McCarthy's proposal will sort of be um, less pedestrianized than what we've come to expect. Uh, and I, I feel like the traffic commission um, may push back at that like they've done in previous years. Um, I, I'm not entirely sure what, what uh, Councillor Paz's um, will look like, uh, what his proposal will look like. But um, I, I think that, you know, he talked uh, earlier this morning about um, sort of improving and having sort of an iterative approach about how we make Moody Street better. Um, so I think we will probably see something somewhat similar um, with addition to um, sort of improve over the years and, you know, gain more community input. One of our friends in one of our group chats mentioned that it's very interesting that in the traffic commission, uh, they'll have two proposals from the two mayoral candidates so far, and it'll be curious to see what the traffic commission does. And also just what each proposal looks like, considering now that there is a that the race is contested between the two people. And so I'd be very interested to see what the two plans look like as the first piece of uh, defining differences between the two candidates. Uh, James, you recorded that meeting. Uh, thank you for doing that, by the way, and recording all those meetings uh, that you do. Uh, oh, yeah. What were your impressions about it? I, I think that uh, getting consistency is going to be like, it struck me as like the most important thing out of all this is just like having something each year that we're going to do and not so that's like guesswork at the last minute one thing that was kind of annoying me was that they were talking about how like big and wider sidewalks are when they are like not really that good the planters get in the way they make yeah, it very yeah difficult for people and like also simple things that could be done to improve accessibility during the like the like when it's pedestrianized it's just like making it so you don't have to go to like the end of a block to get from the curb to the street like putting in some ramps or something dirt your temporary ramps or something like that would help a lot i think but. yeah moody street is very uh inaccessible to people uh with wheelchairs and it's a very valid criticism to say that people with disabilities uh want access to off street parking uh, to make it easier, but we're also we could be doing a lot to make Money Street way more accessible um, and people desire that as well. Anything else on Moody Street? It struck me, I, I watched the meeting. Oh, sorry. I no, no, watched sure. the meeting. Yeah. Home and it just struck me that, um, you know, you'd think this would be a meeting where there'd be a lot of division and like strong opinions on both sides. And it wasn't. It was the people who were raising concerns um, were all almost, well, I think there were a few exceptions, but almost all of them were saying, I'm in favor of doing this. I just want to work out a compromise, either do it for less time or do it in a different way. So it seems like, and, and if, if the meeting was representative of the whole city and who knows if it was but it seemed like there was pretty close to consensus that it should happen it's just a question of can we work out the problems to be clear also all the problems seem immensely solvable it's just a question of having like the will to do it absolutely yeah no it should definitely be be clear that this is totally doable and we just need to do it. And so I'm curious what happens with the Traffic Commission. Uh, we'll, we'll report on it. Um, when When is it, Eamon? What day of the week? Uh, it's next Thursday. So okay. it's on my calendar well, because, of course, it is. Uh, yes, next Thursday, the 16th, 10 a.m. Oh, okay, 10 a.m. So, yeah, no, we'll, have, we'll be reporting on it on the debrief. And so uh, we can continue that discussion there. Uh, so thank you, Eamon, for coming on and giving the presentation. Uh, always. Good to have your opinion on pedestrianizing Waltham, which you can be seem to be becoming an expert on. All right. Thanks, Chris. Thanks, everybody. Take care. Um